By the way, before we start our sample problem, I'd like to discuss this table 5-1 in our lecture handouts. And this is actually an analogy between actual, um, actual stresses or actual members and torsional members. In terms of internal force, we have this actual, I mean in actual members, this is P or, or N, right? That's the internal load. But for torsion, uh, the internal force is the torque and this is the symbol t and for your deformation um this is linear uh, in, in terms of deflection the movement of points uh actually a linear movement of points but for torsion it's a rotational so that's that's an angle and for the stress we call that normal stress and this one this is actually torsional shear stress so we can write some subscript right here and for strain, uh, we call normal strain or extensional strain. Uh, for this one, this is shear strain. And for the modulus, for actual members, uh, that's elastic modulus E. But for torsional members, that's modulus of rigidity G. Right, so now let's start our, um, our first sample problem for torsion. And this problem is taken from the textbook by Bear and Johnston and Dave Wolf, Mechanics of Materials. This is sample 3.01. And the problem says a hollow cylindrical steel shaft is 1.5 meters long and has an inner and outer diameters uh, respectively equal to 40 and 60 mm. Right, so here's our figure right here. And we have this shaft and we have a free end right here and a fixed end and the inside diameter right here this is 40 uh, 40 mm let's write it clearly this is 40 mm and the outside diameter is 60 mm and we have a length of 1.5 uh, meters so the, the question is, what is the largest torque that can be applied to the shaft if the shearing stress is not to exceed 120 megapascals? Right, so if this is the uh, limiting value of shearing stress, then what's going to be the torque? And for letter B, what is the corresponding minimum value of the shearing stress uh, in the shaft? Right, because we have a stress distribution, right? Be uh, we have zero at the, at the center and maximum right here. So... Uh, at some point, uh, actually, uh, in this inside diameter, that's going to be the, the minimum value of the uh, shearing stress. Okay, so first, first step is, is um, uh, let's just write, um, right, let's write, the uh, given the given data right so we have the the shearing stress uh, for letter a we have we have the shearing stress of 120 megapascals right and and for the uh, radius actually we can have the maximum radius right that's um that is 60 divided by 2 so that's going to be 30 mm and for the raw minimum that uh that corresponds to this um to this radial distance so 40 mm divided by 2 we have 20 mm right and um what we need to solve is the polar moment of inertia Right, so solving for the polar moment of inertia. Right, so we have a hollow steel. Um, we have a hollow section, and the pol the polar moment of inertia is pi all over thirty two times d to the fourth. That's the uh, largest diameter or the outer diameter d to the fourth minus the diameter. Or the inside diameter uh, small letter d d to the fourth right so if we substitute all the values 
what we get is um, this is uh, in terms of D in terms of D this is 60 right 60 and 40 so let's just write 60 to the fourth minus 40 to the fourth and this is gonna be 1.02 times 10 to the six and this is uh, mm to the fourth right so we now have the j we have the uh, radial distance and we have the shear stress so uh, solving now for the torque using the torsional stress equation So our torsional stress equation is TR or T rho over J, right? And if we want to solve for the maximum, that's going to be uh, that's going to be the the stresses right here. So it's going to be the, the stresses right here. Right, this one is rho max, and this one is rho mean. And right here, this value of shear stress, this is our shear max. Right, so let's use the maximum first so that uh, we, can, we can find the torque. So, rearranging this equation, what we get is T is equal to shear stress times J all over rho max. And let's write here max. Okay, so for the shear mass, this is 120 megapascals. And for the J, we have 1.02 times 10 to the 6 mm to the 4th. And for the... Um, Row max, this is uh, 30 mm. All right, so this one is Newton per, uh, this is Newton per mm squared. The megapascal is Newton per mm squared. And we have here mm to the fourth, and we have mm uh, in the uh, denominator. So what we get here is a value of this one. Newton mm or in terms of kilonewton uh, that's going to be 4. Uh, 4.084 kilonewton uh, meter okay so that's going to be the um, the largest tor uh, largest torque that can be applied to the shaft if you are going to limit um, the shearing stress to 120 megapascals. Right. So the next step is to solve for the minimum value. Okay. So what that means is that if this is the maximum value of uh, shear stress, torsional shear stress, then what's gonna be this value? And since this is a, a linear relationship, uh, I mean this is just a linear um, distribution, then the minimum value can be obtained by ratio and proportion or similar triangles right so because right here this is this is one triangle right here that's going to be the rho mean uh, because they have the same angle so the the um, shear minimum divided by the rho mean. Let's write it here. Shear minimum divided by the rho mean is equal to the this one, this much. That's the shear max divided by the rho max, right? Because they have the same angle. So shear max divided by the rho max. And for the shear minimum, what we get is if this 120 and uh, the rho mean is 20 mm, right? 
20 mm and this one is uh, or let's write the unit right here 120 megapascals and for the row max this is 30 mm and what you get is 80 megapascals okay so just to have a review of what we did um we have this simple problem right here uh it's just a shaft a hollow shaft that's subjected to torque but the given is uh, the stress and we are to find the the torque and the minimum shear stress right here so what we did first is to write the data um, and the work equation that we need is just the stress equations and we are going to and we needed to solve for the polar moment of inertia first right so this is the equation for the hollow sections um, uh, we solve the polar moment of inertia and since we have we have the shear stress we have the rho and we have the j then we can solve for the torque right so once we have the torque then um, the next thing that we did is to solve for the minimum value so the minimum value is just simply refers to this value and since this is a, a triangle so we can just use the similar triangle to obtain the the minimum shearing stress all right so that's all for this uh for a sample problem and in and and what we are going to do next is to solve some more problems right and this problem is taken from the textbook by phil pot and this is example 6.2 the problem says a 500 mm long solid steel shaft is being designed to transmit a torque of t is equal to 20 newton um, meters newton meter and the maximum shear stress in the shaft must not exceed 70 megapascal and the angle of twist must not exceed uh, three degrees in the 500 mm length determine the minimum diameter d required for the shaft all right so um again let let us read this again so that we can understand so we have a 500 mm long solid steel and um it's being designed to transmit a torque of 20 newton meter right and a shearing stress uh of 70 megapascals but we are going uh but we are not going to exceed a twist uh, i mean an, an angle of twist of three degrees so actually um if you recall our equations okay, so these are our equations shear stress equation tr um let's say t tr all, all over j let's just use the maximum radial distance and another equation from the um uh, another equation from the force and uh, deformation relationship this one so actually right here uh, this J you can express this J in terms of um, in terms of R as well or in or in terms of D and right here there's gonna be another value of T if we have this limiting value of straight uh, of angle of twist then we can obtain another value of diameter and right here if we have this limiting value of stress and from this parameters the j and the r we can actually obtain another um another value of t so let's just write this is d1 and this is d sub 2 and we are going to compare uh whichever uh the value uh, or whichever value that will uh give us the, the safest the safest uh value of, for the diameter right so that's that's gonna be our game plan all right so let's write it here solution it's right, so uh let's write since we are given um, limiting uh, stress and strain values uh, actually not strain uh, and ang angle of twist values then we are going to have to have two values for 
the diameter <clears throat> right so one coming from the stress equation right so we need this uh, from the stress equation tr over j and another one is coming from the force deformation uh, relationship okay so for the first step let's uh, let's derive the equation of um, of diameter using using the shear stress formula right because this one this j you can express this in terms of um, diameter or radius and this one this radius you can express this also in terms of diameter so let's let's derive the equation right so our equation is tr all over j and our radius this is just simply the diameter divided by 2 right and for uh, take note this is solid steel shaft so the j the, um, the polar moment of inertia is just simply pi all over 32 times d to the fourth so that this is the equation for the polar moment of inertia for a solid steel shaft uh, I mean solid circular section uh, that's that's expressed in terms of diameter right so if we simplify so we have d right here and we have d at the denominator so this is d to the uh, raised to 1 and this d raised to 4 so if we simplify what we get uh, we have right we have 32 and divided by 2 that's going to be 16 t all over pi d cube right so here's um, this is what we want so d is just simply cube root of 16 t all over pi times the shear stress right so here's our working equation diameter um, is a function of this uh, torque and the uh, shear stress so since we have the torque right that's 20 newton meter right here and we have the shear stress then we can solve for d and let's just write this is d sub 1 right so d sub 1 is equal to uh, 16 that's the cube root of 16 times the torque so this is 20 um, Newton meter and let's express this in terms of mm so what times 1000 mm divided by uh, the meter divided by pi times the limiting value of or shear stress this is 70 um, megapascals right so megapascals take note this is Newton per mm squared so the unit that uh, we will get here is uh, a unit of mm okay because this is Newton divided by mm squared and we have mm right here so that's gonna be mm cube and the cube root of that that's uh, mm Right, so if you do the computation right here what you get is 11.33 mm okay so the next one is uh, obtaining another d value using the strain strain equation or the uh, not the strain equation force deformation uh, relationship right, so our working equation is TL all over sorry this must be TL over JG so TL all over JG and we can um, we can derive the diameter in, uh, from this polar moment of inertia so let's write it here J is equal to TL all over theta times G right and take note that this data must be expressed in terms of um, this must be expressed in terms of regions right and what is this J so J is just simply uh, pi D sorry pi D to the 4 divided by 32 All right so pi D to the 4 divided by 32 is equal to TL over 
this one so if we substitute the values right here so let's just write 20 this is 20 times 1000 right because this is 20 newton meter and we want to convert this into mm so this is mm and or let's just write mm and this one for the length the length is 500 mm uh, long so this is 500 mm divided by the uh, angle of twist that's three three degrees times pi regions divided by 180 degrees so you have to convert these degrees into uh, regions and our g our modulus of rigidity this is 80 gigapascals right so take note of the unit gigapascals that's times 10 to the to the 9 and uh, I just want to convert this to uh, into megapascals so that's gonna be 80,000 megapascals right so this is megapascals because what I want is a unit of mm right so that's why I convert this into mm and this one is in, you know, in terms of megapascals because that's Newton per mm squared right so if you do the computations right here what you get is D, uh, a D value of 12.49 mm All right so we have the uh, first value of D from the stress equation and another value of D from this uh, from the force deformation uh, relationships and therefore the safest D will be Right, so D will be the will be the maximum of the two. Right, so why should it be the maximum? Right, so eleven point thirty three mm, and this one is twelve point forty nine mm. Right, so why should it be the maximum? Why not the minimum? So the answer is that if this is what we uh, if this is what we use in the design, let's say we use a, a value of 11.33 mm, then it's safe for this value, um, I mean, it's, it's safe for this condition, for the stress, but it's not going to be sa safe for the, for the um, angle of twist, right? So that's going to exceed uh, the value of the angle of twist. So we are... Um, we are going to select the maximum value um, from the two, right? So this one, if, if it's safe for these conditions, then it's going to be safe for this condition as well. So our D will be 12 point. So we can just, um, I mean, practically, you can just simply uh, round this off into some reasonable uh, values, right? So 12.5 mm all right so let's just review again um our solution so we have this problem right here and we are given this uh, maximum shear stress and um the maximum angle of twist and we are asked to find for the diameter so because of that we can derive the diameter from this equation from the stress equation and we can derive um, a diameter value from the force deformation relationship so what we did is to first find the diameter based on the stress and then uh, we obtained this value and um, we did next is to find another uh, diameter value based on the on the force deformation relationship right and we obtained this value and we just compare the values and we have to select the maximum of the two because the maximum will be the safest, right? So the maximum is this value, 12.5 mm. All right, so I guess that's, um, that's enough for these determinate problems. And in the next video, we'll, we'll do indeterminate, um, indeterminate problems. So that means that we are going to incorporate the geometry of deformation in the problem. All right, so see you in the next video.